Sapphire had watched the others go about the cleaning from a chair, much to their annoyance. Volzen had come out to join them, along with two of his guards still fit for a fight, despite some minor wounds. They had been mostly done when Tom had come in. Um, is the nuke awake? There was a shared look around the place until Sapphire spoke up. Uh, no, a puma came out a few hours ago. She is still in there. Rachuk spoke up. Yeah, she is either sleeping or staring at the loft, wondering when it will stop spinning. Sapphire was glad on Rachuk's behalf the nuke wasn't here right now, but he was most likely correct. Um, talk later then. Need help? Whatever had been affecting Tom earlier seemed to have mostly vanished, and he took to the work without complaint, if a little slower than usual. Once the halls were again clean and orderly, he had come up to Volson, looking like a kid about to ask for a snack. Um, am I allowed to talk with Archon? Ugh, what is it with you and thinking so little of yourself? Obviously, we are traders after all, most of our job is talking. Well, my job at least. If you are looking to make friends, just don't be an arsehole and you should do grandly. Besides, what makes you think I decide who he can and can't talk to? Uh, oh, sorry, thank you. Well, at least Tom was being very polite, even if a bit excessively so. Sapphire wondered if they had dragons where he was from. He seemed to recognize the concept of dragons and even had a word for them in his language. So they must, but he claimed they didn't. Might as well follow him to see what he got himself into and maybe learn something. Tom was making his way to the greeting hall, pondering just what he was planning to do there. He wanted to make friends because, well, how awesome would that be? He also wanted to know how to kill said friend. Tom wasn't sure just how best to go about those conflicting objectives. When he entered the greeting hall, he saw the outer door had been opened so Archon could stretch out a little more and catch some sun. It was already late afternoon. The day could hardly be described as wasted though. Not that that was of any import now. He needed to figure out how to have a conversation with a dragon. It couldn't be staying for too long, so he better learn what he could. Tom was also guessing that if he ever wanted to leave this place, Dragonback was the most likely solution. So, friends first, he thought to himself. As he pondered this, he didn't realise he had already been noticed while standing there like an idiot. So, I'm guessing you want to ask something. Whoops, was all Tom thought, as he tried to come up with something witty to say, perhaps a joke or something. What would work in Draconic? Oh, hello Sapphire, well met. I do hope the wing is doing well. Archon interrupted Tom's thinking. It will be fine, just a few more weeks, that is all, she replied. Ah, good to hear. Now, Tom, if you aren't going to, then I will. When we first probably met, you asked whether I brief fire is in the stories. You claim to come from a place that has no dragons and you have never seen one. How do you have stories of us? Okay, Tom could work with that. Story time, no problem. Uh, old myths and legends. Some believe there were dragons once. Most believe we just made you up. We have many kinds of dragons. Hmm, kinds you say. As in fire, storm, ice, and so on? Archeon seemed curious, Tom thought. Good start. Yes and no. We have a lot more than that. Dragons without wings, dragons of the sea, kind dragons, evil dragons, big ones, small ones, clever dragons, and dragons that monsters. Hmm, well, you certainly have a bright imagination, I'll give you that. What am I, then? Could he say European dragon? Was that even right? Screw it. It wasn't like the internet was here to bash him for getting it wrong. When in doubt, fall back on D&D. You are Blue European Dragon. Remember a story which say Blue Dragon use lightning, have a big central horn on snout, love desert and evil, so two out of four. <laughs> well, that is hilarious. That would look ridiculous. But for old myths, that isn't hard bad. It seems a bit quaint to just call somebody evil because of their colour, though. Don't mention the Darklings, Tom. Don't mention them. No need for a race war. No, it's just story, though. Makes it easy, just go, those are bad. Tom's made a pointing gesture out while trying to remain calm and collected. So far, so good. He did need to learn something, though. Shiva told about Evil Dragon, a red one, you know? 
Tom asked tentatively. Yes, I know of him, the insolent little whelp. Now he would fall under your quaint definition of evil. He killed and burned for fun. Many Reds enjoy the thrill of battle. That is why you find so many of them in the army, or as mercenaries after all. Many of my kind are obsessed with honour and glory, even purity, much like your hosts here, even if they are a little laxer than most, being this far out. Rasham was different, though. He didn't care as long as he could kill. He was happy. So he made deals that would allow him to kill as much as possible, to feel the thrill of it. Yet he was a coward. Once things got tough, he ran like a scared little kid, leaving his slaves behind to buy him time. I think he still lives, though. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Shiva asked me to help fix that. Hmm, you want to kill a dragon? I'm afraid it's going to be hard to answer that one without being insulting, but you and what army? Didn't take army to make it hard for you. Hmm, careful now, but no, that is true. It wasn't like I could see the bastards or outrun them with whatever was following us, giving them a place to rest. Besides, and with it like that, if I were to let loose, I would just kill as many of my escorts as the enemy. Yeah, true. Sorry. I have favour to ask. May I measure you? Tom was crossing his fingers for the best. What exactly are you planning on measuring? The dragon didn't sound opposed, just cautiously curious, Tom thought. Uh, armor thickness? Dimensions? Soft points? You want to learn how to kill me? No, no, not you. Be nice to kill Rashan, I must try. Tom was really hoping duty and honour would buy Archon over to the idea. Mm, fine then. Besides, if you wanted to kill me, I believe you would have tried when I was more wounded. Tom stopped at that. Yes, the dragon had been very wounded with gashes deep enough to stick his arm in. But as he inspected him, there was nothing but scars now. Rapid healing was a factor too then. Tom brought out the measuring tape and calipers, in the hope it wouldn't be strange enough to cause questions. From the front of the dragon's chest to the centre, where he guessed a heart would be, was nearly two metres of muscle, flesh and bone, not to mention the plate-like scales. He had no clue how hard they were, but measuring at the exposed edges where they overlapped, they looked to be at least 50 millimetres thick, and possibly more towards the centre. When Archer moved, they did flex though, so not rock hard. But who was to say with a magic dragon that breathes lightning? They may be tougher than steel. Where the thick place didn't cover, there was just thick, leathery skin and smaller scales. He had seen firsthand it was pierced with relative ease by arrow and blade. The sheer bulk of him made him mostly immune towards serious damage by that method though. Tom theorised the wings might be taken out like that though. There must be important tendons running right between the skin around the wing joints. It was a shame he didn't have a skull to look at. He would like to know if his rifle had a chance of piercing it. He guessed not though, even with the few high-powered FMJ rubber tips he had brought. He didn't fancy his chances. Repeated fire to the side or back might do the trick though. It was only leathery skin there and if he missed the ribs, the result should be rather nasty organ damage. Even if it wouldn't be immediately fatal, it might do with enough rounds being pumped in. The unarmored parts of the neck might do as well. Out of curiosity, how would you try and kill me if you were to try? Archon asked, looking on curiously. He couldn't say gun. Volson had claimed to use fire magic, so why not? Mm, need to down first and use fire magic to pierce unarmored parts, destroy inside little by little, let bleed to death, maybe take out breathing. Mm, you sound like a remarkably nasty little one. Still, it might work if you can get me on the ground. Sounds worse than arrows, even if they sting quite a lot, that's for sure. Volsum is quite impressed with your abilities. How would you plan on staying alive for long enough, though? If you were trying to kill me, I wouldn't just let you hang on or hide behind a wall now, would I? No, I need to fight from hiding. Weigh you down. Well, you aren't a dragonette in disguise then, that much is for sure. Tell me, Tom, is that how all of you fight? Not again. What was the right answer here? Let's lean on the nature thing that sounded like a great idea. We let nature and night hide us from enemy, then we strike with surprise and disappear again. Tom was quite pleased with his explanation. It was rather neat, yet fake enough. And yet, when you came to my age, you elected to stand on my back, surrounded by enemy combatants in the middle of a storm. 
You must be remarkably bad at hiding, if that's what you were trying. The dragon sounded like he found that rather funny. Fair enough, Tom thought. It wasn't like he and Dakota almost died as a result. It hadn't been brilliant, but what was he supposed to do then? Uh, not really my element. I don't know how to fight in the air. That wasn't even a lie. He had no clue what he was supposed to do up there. Well, let me give you some advice then. It is rather hard to hide up there, so you might want to figure out something else. Unless you can find someone equally crazy and capable to watch your back. Yeah, noticed. Didn't go that well. Messed up in the end. Kinda got screwed. See, now that I find curious. Just last night you were celebrated as the ace of the battle, and yet here you are. Looking back, and you are not happy with the result and even blaming yourself. I'm not saying you are wrong to do so, but most people I know would be thrilled. Why aren't you? Too much luck. Got very close. That is not acceptable. Must do better. Tom hadn't thought about it like that. He had an unfair advantage, and yet he had come close to losing it all. That wouldn't do, even if he didn't really know what to do about it, if there was a next time. So, is that why you were taking measurements then? I mean, really? Sort of, I guess, Tom admitted. Must learn to do better. Must learn enemy. I think Volzen is onto something with you. You truly are different. You told me how you fight, but why do you do it? Why did he want to know all this? Tom was starting to get worried. He'd wanted to be the one asking to do the questions here after all. Archim was starting to get too curious. Well, the old motto would have to do. Fight for what is worth fighting for. I fight for what is behind me, Tom replied. But you are here to fulfill a debt by a lord of some distant land, and yet you claim to fight for the sake of what you are defending, not honour or glory? How long have you been here? Tom had to think about that one for a while. How long had it been? A few weeks, at least. Had it been a month? It couldn't be much more than that. Month, I think. And you're already willing to put your life on the line and fight for what is worth fighting for, as you call it? Well, yes. Likely would have done so the day I got here, if necessary. There are kids here. Families I must fight. Didn't know what you were, but families went, so I fight. Hmm. Had I asked one of my guards, they would have gone for duty, honour and glory or something like that. I'm guessing, even if they would be fighting for the people here too. Even if they might not admit it. Tom thought the dragon was starting to sound excited. The dragoness certainly hadn't been, when he had told them all this. Should he just ride this train, he wondered? Why not? Archon seemed to be agreeing so far. What quotes did he have that worked in Draconic? There is honour in serving, if not in fighting. A soldier fights for what needs defending, even if not his. Tom was beginning to sound like a preacher for the Iraq War, but it seemed to be working, as there was silence for a moment before Archon responded. Noted. I think I might have somebody you need to meet before it's too late. I will take that up with Volson, though. Oh no, what had he now got himself into? He just wanted to make friends with a dragon, that was all. Hopefully this wasn't somebody too important. Sapphire just shook her head, looking at Tom. Well, it seems you both managed to make an impression, I think. Now, just because I don't agree with your people's way of doing things all the time, doesn't mean you get to take that out on Tom, the dragon replied. You just make it sound like all we care about is dying in battle or something like that. Might I point out that we have saved Tom's life twice now? Yes, yes, I'm just saying it's nice to meet someone who seemed to understand the gravity of fighting, rather than seeing it as a sport. It's not a sport. It is our duty. We must defend our home. And it would seem Tom agrees on that point. Best defense can be a good offense, Tom added, shrugging his shoulders. <laughs>